Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I wanted to talk about the future of Call of Duty on PC, and this does concern new console gamers as well, because both of the new consoles, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, are essentially PCs. They have PC-like hardware and performance, they support high frame rate, high resolution, they also support keyboard and mouse, cloud streaming, and a whole variety of features that were PC exclusive for a very long time. So they're going to perform similarly to a PC, and we're going to be talking a lot about performance today. On top of this, the pro scene is moving to PC, so for those of you that are into competitive gaming, or just the Call of Duty scene in general, the majority of all the pro players are going to be playing on PC but with a controller, which we'll talk about later. Ever since Modern Warfare 2019 dropped, Activision has been far more heavily invested in PC than in years past. They rolled out a playable game, which is amazing and it made me happy, and even though it's really bad to say it like that, but in several of the past releases the games weren't very playable. They had horrible frame rate issues, missing options, they didn't even have proper mouse sensitivity options sometimes. They did a lot of unusual things that made nobody play them. This year, Activision Raven and Infinity Ward has had long-term support for their PC launch and their PC patches and crossplay support, so at least for a while it was getting better as it went along. The Warzone tournaments were crossplay which because most of the top streamers are PC now, that meant they were coming in through there. And because of this support, Warzone in general and the Warzone tournaments became a surprisingly PC heavy game. I think probably a quarter, maybe 20% of the players are PC. It's still more console based, but there's a lot of PC master race gamers out there. They even partnered with Nvidia to promote RTX features in their game. And it was, it was good for a while. It's going to be interesting next year, though, because the patches and subsequent performance of Call of Duty on PC have been getting worse and worse to the point where it's become frustrating for me to play. And I wonder if the next game is even going to run properly on new consoles. If I can't get 120 FPS on a year-old game on a beast gaming PC now, will people who purchase a PlayStation 5 be able to get 120 FPS out of Black Ops Cold War on brand new hardware and a completely untested, unpolished game? Like, it's, it's, it's going to be rough, you know? That's much less for PC, which is a little bit harder to optimize for. And in this upcoming year, the pro scene is going to be PC only. They have to play with controllers still. I don't know if it's PlayStation controllers or a controller of choosing, but I'm seeing a lot of old console pros having a really hard time adapting to PCs. They're trying to build dual PC streaming rigs. They're uh, having driver issues, aim assist issues, frame rate drop issues. They're doing goofy things with field of view and trying to kind of cheat and game the system a lot of it, and like audio issues. There's a lot of difficulties in changing over, and they're going to experience that anyway, but they're also going to bump heads into some really nasty optimization problems, and I cannot wait to see the unfiltered hot takes that the pros have on Twitter when things start going wrong. But I thoroughly enjoyed playing Warzone on PC for the last six months. Unfortunately, as a whole, the performance got better for a little bit, and then it's just been trending down with every patch. Every patch that comes out, my frame rate gets lower, my game gets less stable. For those that tune into my streams, you probably know how often it crashes or dips or has problems. And it got so frustrating that, like a lot of the pro streamers I was just talking about, I decided to do my first dual PC stream last night. So I have an Elgato and a second PC, and I streamed through that one. And I, I was basically forced to do this and to get this very complicated setup going. Otherwise, it was becoming very clear to me that I was not going to be able to stream and record Warzone on a single PC. And even a lot of my creator friends said that I was an absolute madman for even trying to run Warzone on just one PC and stream it at the same time, which is kind of enlightening in a way that all of my other professional content creator associates think that that's just sort of lunacy, that you need multiple computers to run a game properly. That is very, very concerning, right? But I was forced to build one. I got it going. It, it helps a ton. It's lovely. I might do a video about that later. But the reality is that otherwise, I wasn't going to be able to keep making content, like, at all, no matter what I did, unless I made this choice. It's one that I've been putting off for a while. I stretched for a very long time with medium settings, with turning down various anti-aliasing and other options to save some VRAM. I did some optimizations to my streaming and recording to use different parts of the PC that's maybe not as demanding. I went into the player options config file and changed the video memory scale, which is really weird because the game reports the wrong video memory scale and makes your GPUs overheat or think that they're using all the memory, so I had to 
adjust that, which normally would be a terrible idea in gaming, but I had to do something terrible to make it work normally. And then even after all of that tinkering, after six months of fidgeting with it, I was still getting bad frame drops, there were still crashes, and especially more recently, the texture bug is back, which makes my game unplayable. All of my characters fall apart into this Tetsuo-like mess at the end of a, of a match. I can't even pick up guns and move around. And then you want to add on top of all of that that if the game lags too much, or people run certain hacks, that sometimes my game will just straight up crash, which is bizarre. And that's not just a me problem, that's not just a me not knowing what I'm doing with my computer, because other games aren't like this. Fortnite, for example, most certainly isn't like this. Rogue Company isn't like this. League of Legends isn't like this. The vast majority of other PC games that come out just run normally with no weird performance issues. I just uncap my frame rate, I do borderless windows so I can move across my monitors quickly, and I usually don't have to think about it very much, which is incredibly nice. Pretty much every other game on the market, I can run very well on a single PC with high frame rates, minimal crashes, and only a single video encoder. They have better optimizations. They do have bugs, but they're more reasonable amounts. And PC gaming and other genres is surprisingly simple, but for Call of Duty, when I'm optimizing my rig for streaming and content creation, I feel like a literal mad scientist chasing down Reddit threads that have three replies from two years ago with people that are solving kind of unusual issues with the COD engine and how the COD uses the GPU and try, you know a little bit of trial and error on 40 different things and pinging all my professional friends and trying to learn things. And I feel like I'm Charlie Day at making this big crazy board all over my my wall measuring results and stuff and that's not something that I want to do I don't I don't understand why it has to be this way I get why it was in past years okay so for many years in the past Call of Duty on PC was an afterthought the player base was tiny it was like one to five percent tops and it made total sense for Activision to not invest in PC development because they wouldn't even get a basic return on investment it made a lot more sense for them to do a relatively cheap port that's not the decision I would have wanted, but I understand business, I understand how business works, and I understand the logic there. But now there's a pretty huge chunk of gamers that are on PC. As a matter of fact, PC is making a comeback, and Warzone in particular is massively successful on PC and just in general. According to the earnings column, Warzone, and at least the Call of Duty brand in general, which is mostly Warzone now, is a multi-billion dollar a year game. That's a big deal. Their player counts are higher than ever, and it's kind of the crown jewel in Activision's gaming portfolio. And that's really good and great and all, but that doesn't explain why a multi-billion dollar number one game in the world kind of thing still runs like an early access alpha and is flooded with so many hackers that every single time I die I have to watch the kill cam to see how sus it is and decide if I'm going to report somebody or not. It is a shame and it is a failure as a company developer entity whatever that a game this popular has this many problems. You could compare this to PUBG and say, well, PUBG was similarly popular, if not more so, and had more problems, but I don't think that's a fair comparison because PUBG was created by a truly independent development studio that had not made a first-person shooter before, and also they pioneered an entire genre three or four years ago. I, I even lost track of how old PUBG is, but we've had many battle royales since then. Uh, Activision is a gigantic company. Every single one of the studios that they own has tons of experienced game developers. There is not a reason for it to be struggling this much. It should be performing far better. And unfortunately, right now, Black Ops Cold War on PC is looking more like Modern Warfare 2019 in terms of optimization. That's not to say it looks ugly. As a matter of fact, Black Ops Cold War looks pretty nice on PC when it's running properly, but it does struggle in terms of optimization. And I'm really genuinely hoping that somebody somewhere down the chain this year in Activision or in Treyarch hears the calls of these PC gamers and takes some of this more seriously. Optimizing PC gameplay should be a top priority for Activision as a whole right now, especially especially since, as we mentioned earlier, both consoles are basically PCs. If my PC can't crank 120 FPS, how happy is Sony going to be when one of their premier launch titles can't crank 120 FPS on the most powerful console on the market? Similar with Xbox. If you can 
optimize it for one rig, it can be optimized for another, especially since they're so similar. Because this year, the PCs, that, sorry, I said the PCs that are coming out. My God, I'm getting ahead of myself. Both of the new consoles kind of remind me of Steam boxes. I don't know if you remember, there were like Alienware Steam boxes and Steam was selling the Steam controller. And these little kind of smaller, they were essentially computers and you would plug them into your HDTV and you would play games through this little microcomputer that had fixed specs. And that is a lot of what the new consoles look like to me. They are incredibly powerful, intuitive, tons of options. In PC-like hardware, they're Steam boxes. So optimizing a game to run well on these higher end systems makes a lot of sense, especially since for the first time ever, Xbox gamers are gonna play with their field of view, frame rate, resolution, keyboard and mouse, and HDR options all on one machine instead of having a lot of those things locked or chosen for you, which is gonna be incredibly complicated and lead to probably some weird performance scenarios. But optimizing a game well enough to run on a PC and new consoles is just better for everybody. Everybody wants to log in on day one PlayStation 5 and play 120 FPS. And right now, I just don't know if we're going to be able to do that. I, I don't have a well-reasoned conclusion or optimistic ending to this, but I'm just really frustrated at fighting against bugs and glitches and bizarre things that happen on my game. What I really want next year is just a year of relatively smooth gaming from Black Ops Cold War. I don't want weird glitches. I don't want weird bugs. I don't want frame rate dips. I don't want to have to alter config files and do things that should destroy my system because this one particular thing forces a glitch that makes the actual game run better. I don't want to have to do that. I would much rather go back to the plug and play kind of setup that I had and have it work normally like a game for normal human beings. And I also really don't want people on next gen consoles to go through the struggle that I've gone through this year with Warzone. I, I hope that it runs better than that. And that's just it for today's video. It's, it's just an opinion. It's a feeling and expression. And I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. How do you feel about Call of Duty optimization, both on the new consoles and on PC? That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.